All right, hey everybody. So what we're going to be uh, tying today is my version of the X Caddis, which is uh, let me get a little better shot. Boom, there it is, right there. So I, what I've done here is done it in black. Oh, and I got some geef on there. I should have noticed that before. Oop, now I'm knocking stuff over. So it's this X Caddis. Uh, it's a little bit different of a variation. It's gonna we're gonna have this like little shiny body to it. Uh, although you can. Uh, add some dubbing to this and do a, just a little rib along the side or uh, along the uh, abdomen uh, and you can do that too which would be much closer to the original version uh, so the thread I'm using here is just a uni 80 in black uh, you can we're gonna be doing this with deer hair you could also do this with elk hair if you wanted to just to give it a different appearance um, so yeah we'll just get kind of get going here so I want to start my thread about two bodkin widths behind the eye of the hook one two pretty close uh, that'll give us plenty of room to tie on and get everything uh, wrapped up along the front real nicely so what we want to do is we want to start advancing our thread to the back nice slow even turns uh, if you're going to do just the flash body like we're going to do here it's really important that your underbody is nice. And we're going to go back to just about the um, the bend, or I'm sorry, the barb. The next thing we need is some Antron yarn. Uh, again, you can use this in a variety of colors. You could use brown or cream, or so this is you know this with most patterns. This is something you can play around with the colors a lot on. Um, so here's your normal strand. You can see how thick that is. We don't need anywhere near that. If I can bring it out to the end here, you can kind of see where I've already been trimming away at this a little bit. And uh, so you can, we can literally take this and divide it into about thirds, or, or you could even put it into quarters if you really wanted to, because we just don't need a whole lot. So when I'm pulling that out, you can see if I try to straighten that together. You can kind of get a flavor there for how close it is. Well, maybe I should do it the other way. Let's see if I can do it to where you can see it. You can kind of get an idea of like how much you're going to need, which is right here. There we go. You got a decent background, and this is the full rope. So you can really see there that we're just we're not using much. So a third, or uh, even a little a quarter of the actual uh, Antron. Uh, rope I guess for a better word and we don't need a whole lot of it either so you don't need to trim off a huge distance because really all we need is something that goes about the length of the hook shank like that because it's going to be our shuck uh, you would call it a tail or a shuck it's going to be coming out the back and so if you can see here I've got it lined up with my hook shank I've got all this stuff laying out front so you can actually even trim this a little closer so what I like to do here is, is kind of tease this and play with it a little bit to make it uneven uh, just a little bit so that it <clears throat> you can kind of see that there. So I've got some trailing some tra trailing fibers that are longer than the others. Now ideally we want to have this about half the length of the hook shank. So from there to right about there. Something along those lines. If you need to, what you can also do um, is you can tie this in wherever it fits your hands more comfortably. Just put one, two, and then you can take this and just pull. If you've done two wraps, you can just pull it to your desired length. Um, but right about there is pretty good. And we want to make sure that's nice and down. I'll come back forward. And again, since we want to keep this nice, we, uh, this underbody nice and smooth, I'm just going to wrap this forward. And as I do so, I want to make sure that material stays in the same place. If it starts to move and bend on you, you're going to have a hard time wrapping your flash. Uh, it won't stay. It won't lay as flat and as and as even as uh, it otherwise might. So when I get close to the front here, what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll just trim out so that lines up right with my uh, thread there. That way, I, when I wrap it forward all the way. Well, these little guys are going to spin on me. I think that'll be okay. Now that way, as I bring it forward, everything is trapped 
uh, underneath the thread and it's nice and nice and tight and secure. So the next thing we need here, uh, what I'm using here is just this black flashaboo. Okay, um, just because the hook is smaller in diameter. Oh, there we go. Um, it just, I think it makes it for a little easier wrapping. However, you could also uh, use the holographic tensile, which is it's essentially the same thing. And this is a medium sized tensile. Um, and you could do that, you could do that as well. Um, but for this, I just kind of like the flashaboo. I, uh, I, ha I have an abundance of it. Uh, I find that it makes my, I can make my wraps a little nicer with it. So we're just going to bring it in and over, and I'm just going to pull. Once I have a few wraps, and I'm just going to pull that flash about until it also sneaks under my thread. And now I'm going to wrap back on it, keeping this underbody nice and neat. Good looking flies require nice underbodies 90% of the time. If your underbody is all sloppy and messy, you're going to have a tough time with your other materials. So then I'm just going to wrap the flashaboo. And this is not a race. Uh, the goal here is to try to keep it all touching. And there is no doubt that with doing it with flashaboo makes it a little bit tougher than using it with just that bigger tinsel. Um, but again, I th I just kind of like the way the flashaboo sparkles a little bit. I'm getting kind of more, um, I don't know, I just think it provides a little extra little extra sparkle with all the additional wraps in there. But you could definitely do it with tinsel too. So as we're coming up to the front, I'm going to bring this down to my thread. I'm going to pull it up, cross my thread over, and bring it down once, cross my thread over to the back and bring it to the front again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this forward about two turns. I'm going to fold the flash boot to the back and wrap it in again tight there. That way, like I said in other videos, we just perform this like little wedge uh, so this material is completely locked into place. There's no way for it to slip out. And for this, I like to bring in my fingernail clippers because I can just get right on top of it. Be careful, you might nick your thread like I just did, but it'll be okay. And now you've got a little thread hair sticking out there. There we go. I just had to buy some new sharp scissors just for stuff like this so one thing I should have probably said at the beginning of the video and I didn't there's gonna be a few things that we're gonna need here one of them is gonna be a hair stacker uh, this is a uh, Griffin hair stacker uh, this is like the third not third Griffin but the third hair stacker I've bought and I haven't looked back I really like this hair stacker it's not very expensive it's like eight bucks or something I think uh, also if you want to uh, when we get to the head, you're going to need a lighter and a comb to help get the underbody fur out. Uh, and then also, since we're not using any kind of ribbing or anything along the, uh, the body, if you want to use adhesive to make sure that if a, like, so a trout tooth doesn't come in there and snag on uh, that flashaboo or your tinsel, and uh, just kind of shred that, you know, if it happens, your fly's essentially dead in the water. Uh, this is a good place to use some UV glue. I've just got a little dab of Solarez on there, Solarez Thin. And I'm just going to put it on top and then just kind of work it. We don't need it real thick. I'm just going to kind of work it all along the, uh, the abdomen here until I have the abdomen completely covered. And again, there's not going to be a lot of this on there. Um, make sure you always put your cap back on your uh, UV glue before you tor torch it just in case. And so I'm going to kind of zap it, zap it, zap it. 
Give it a second and I'll do it again. I just learned that you shouldn't just blast your UV glue all at one time. We've got an interview coming up with that. Uh, they'll be posted in the Facebook group. Uh, actually, it may already be out by this time. So anyway, there's some food for thought. So now that we have uh, our body done and our shuck done, <clears throat> we are ready to add the wing. So I've seen a lot of people get frustrated with using too much or too little hair. And uh, what I do works for me uh, darn near every time I'm building hair wings or anything else like that is I will take... Let me zoom this out a little bit so you can see. I'll take my deer or my elk hair and I'll grab a pinch off the hide like this, just so I have it like that. And I will bring it forward to the hook gap and I want to see if it covers that hook gap. I, now what I mean by that is I want it to go literally from the bottom side of the shank to the top side of that uh, point. And so when you pinch it tight together like that, see I'm like I'm right about right there. So that's how that's to me that's ideal for the amount that you want. And then I'm going to take that and just trim that clump off. The next preparing the deer hair is important. So the next I'm going to take this and with my left thumb, left index, I'm going to grab more towards the middle or front and I'm just going to pull out gently just pull out whatever's in there that doesn't want to stick. Then I'm going to run my comb through there. You'll see that I'm starting to get more. That's good because we want that we want that underbody stuff out or the uh, the under fur out of the uh, hair. And then I'll turn it around and I'll do it again, kind of pluck through it, do it again. Just to make sure I don't have too much in there. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it around again because I'm right-handed. I'm going to get kind of a Put it into a tip like this. I'm just going to get it into the stacker. Okay. Give it about five taps. And then when you pull it out like this, that hair should be pretty much aligned, which it is. So let me zoom back in here. Now, you can pull this out. We'll remove the stacker. And we're going to kind of line this up. So we want that wing to come kind of right into that shuck area, right towards the end of the body, just over into the shuck, or just short. So anywhere between here and here, if you can kind of see that, that's kind of ideal. So when we do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer that again. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of this off because we just don't need it. Uh, what you're going to need is about a quarter inch or so out front of your fingers once you have your distance. And I'll do this part over a trash can. Just help save as much mess as possible. And then we're ready to tie the wing on. So you got to pinch this stuff real good. And I'm going to set it down right on top of that hook shank. And, I wanna, and I'm going to transfer it the pinch to my left thumb, left index, like so. Now if these guys are starting to come out on you and flare them down, just pull them out. Don't worry about trying to get them all in there secure. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over the top once with a loose wrap, twice with a loose wrap, and we're going to pull down. Okay. Now this is now using 8.0, this can tend to break your thread real easy. So go easy with it. Now we're gonna literally bring our thread through a little bit each time twist and pull okay and we're gonna grab everything up front here it's rotating on me a little bit but don't worry about that too much then we're gonna grab everything up front we're gonna jump the th thread to the front now if you notice how I'm angling my bobbin going back, I'm going to come down underneath. So I want that thread to come tight underneath that hair. I don't want it to come down, because if it comes down here, down in here, that does me no good. I want to get that as tight to that deer hair as possible. 
And when you do it, it should kind of stand up something along those lines. Okay, that's pretty good. And we're going to move all that stuff forward. And I'm going to come back to the middle. And now we're going to fix this wing right where we want it. Because we want it to kind of ride along the sides and up. Let's get rid of these. So we want to try to keep this stuff separated. Now you can actually go ahead. We can go ahead and trim that front part off. And all we need to do is just kind of clump it together and just kind of ride your scissors. I don't know if you can, can you see that very well. That light's not very good in there when I do it that way. Let me see if I can move my hands just a fuzz. Let's see. See, so I'm going to come in right there, and I'm just going to come right along that hook eye and trim. So I've got something about like that. That's good. It's a little bit bigger than I actually want it, but it, it's a little hard for me to, a little hard to do with the camera in the way. Now I'm going to take all this wing, and I'm going to pull it up towards the front. I'm going to put a wrap in behind that wing. You only need the one. And I'm going to come back over the middle. Now I'm going to come back to the front. So we went from the back to the middle to the front on that. I know it's hard to see. My fingers are in the way. So now we can actually go ahead and whip finish this fly. You can. I prefer to do it up underneath here like I'm doing here. Make sure you get underneath all of that deer hair that's forming our little caddis head. Uh, if you have a hard time doing that at first, I totally get it. You can also bring it back and uh, do it right on top there if you need to, just to make sure it's, either way, just make sure it's in place. And we can trim our thread away. Now what we're going to do is kind of come through and groom this a little bit. We want to get any hairs that we don't like sticking out. We want to get those off. I take my hackle pliers and just pluck them and pull them. You don't have to be horribly precise here because we are going to torch this in just a second. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So that's that's pretty good there. So the next thing you need to do is I'm going to take my left thumb, left index. I'm just going to lick them and I'm going to grab and pinch, grab, pinch and pull all of this back one time just to kind of give it a little damp. I'm going to come in with this lighter and really quickly just start to singe it. If you need to do more than once or twice, be sure to relick your fingers each time. You can see that I'm kind of packing that head in together. Now that's going to stop that deer hair from flaring any further. And you don't want to leave it on there too long. Uh, you know, because that flame will dry out this hair and burn it in the back, and we don't want that either. So now we've got that wing basically where we want it. And I'll come in and do a final little groom here. There's a little little guy that I don't like there. Let's see if I can get him. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe I can get it with my fine scissors. There we go. Boom. That's it. Now, if you want to secure the head, uh, you can totally do that with, um, again, with some solar res. You can put some solar res up underneath right here, uh, or you can use some super glue. It's really up to you if you want to do that or not. That's going to hold up pretty well anyway. So there you go. There's the uh, X Caddis with a flash body. And I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't subscribed, and please do so, or like the video, let people know that you like it. And you can find us at Fly Tying for Beginners at Facebook. So make sure you join us there too. Thanks.